everybody. Thank you for joining me for another episode of The Draw Along Show. And it's a brand new week. It's Wednesday, so this is the first of two shows we have for this week. Tomorrow, same time, 5.30 p.m. Eastern, 2.30 Pacific. And we're going to do what we always do, which is going to start with a draw along, which is a you draw it section of the show. It's a step-by-step -step drawing that usually takes somewhere around 10 minutes. It's short, it's sweet, and you always wind up with something fun at the end. And it's usually simple enough that you could repeat those steps pretty easily if you want to draw it again. Uh, we're going to follow up that with an art vocab lesson today. It's always fun to learn a little bit of art vocabulary. Terminology, uh, good for you to know those things, right? And then, of course, we're going to conclude with our usual game of animal and activity, where you will suggest for me an animal doing something funny or strange or weird, and then I'll draw it for you at the end of the show. Uh, folks, I hope that you've all been uh, keeping active. I know it's very easy to just sit all the time, especially in the midst of a global pandemic. Um, exercise is important. Now, one thing I tried uh, for the first time a couple of years ago was boxing, believe it or not. Um, only after a few lessons, I realized it was a pretty stupid thing for an artist to do, considering I could very easily injure my wrists or my hands. But I did learn a couple of basic things, and that was fun. And I do have a question for you all, and that is why are pirates such good boxers? Well, it's because they have a mean right hook. <laughs> oh my goodness. Time to draw. Now, you are going to need something to draw with. Could be a pencil, could be a pen, could be a marker, could be a stick, could be a boxing glove that you dip in some oil-based inks and then draw all around the boxing ring with it. You know, just decorate the floor if you like. I don't care, use whatever you like. Um, now to do these drawings, you do have to be able to do uh, three simple things, and they are a straight line, okay, a zigzag, or a curvilinear line. And that could be an S curve, could be a C curve, right? If you can do those three simple things, then you can follow along and you can draw with me. Let's say hi to some folks who are joining us today. Here we have uh, Clever. What's up, Clever? Hillary, Basmala, Sam, Laura. Umicorn is here. How are you doing? Nice to see you again. Uriel and uh, I see Pearl is here. How's it going, Pearl? Maria, Misty. Oh, wow. Jessica's here as well and Hillary. Ruth, how's it going, everybody? Thanks for joining the Draw Along show today. Hope you're ready to do some drawing. Let's get right to it. We're going to start our drawing with something we almost never do, and that is a curvilinear line that connects the beginning of the line to the end, also known as a cycle. Okay, here we go. Around we go. We almost never use circles in the draw along show. Why? Because circles are kind of hard to draw. But don't you worry about that. All you have to do is not to worry about it being perfect. You don't have to worry about it being, you know, this is not going to be something you have to worry about. I promise. Okay? When I say draw a straight line, I don't mean you have to draw a perfectly straight line. I mean, you know, it's straight-ish. Okay? All right. Now, moving along. We're going to follow that up with a C curve that is going to touch that circle. And this is going to be kind of interesting. It's going to go like this. It's going to be the same size as if you were going to draw another circle right there. Okay, so you can go and do this really slowly if you like. Take your time. But you're only going to draw it about this much. Pause for a second. Check out what it looks like on my screen. Now, have I drawn it right next to it? No. <coughs> Excuse me. No, I've drawn it up at a diagonal, right? This away. Okay? That's what you want to do. Next step, we are going to take this part of the circle, and we're going to continue it just a little ways, but then we're going to turn it into a straight line. Check this out. I'm going to go this way, and then I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to ease into a straight line. See that? So I went around, and then I went into a straight line that way. Okay? Okie dokie. This is not something we've ever done before, this kind of a series of curvilinear lines and even a circle. Now, we're going to do another curvilinear line. It's going to start here, and it's going to come up and over. Check it out. Up and over. Like this. See that? Now, that is slightly smaller, I would say, of a curve than this circle and this circle here. And then we're just going to drop it straight on down like that. Everybody with me so far? 
All right, this is different from what we usually do. I recognize that, I understand that. Very importante. Uh, let me just check something here really quickly. Um, good, 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 good. All righty. It looks like we're having a little bit of buffering with our stream today. Not sure what's going on with that. Interesting. Um, I hope it's not too bad for all the rest of you, okay? And I hope it does clear itself up a little bit. ASAP. All right, moving on. We're now going to do a tiny little curvilinear line right there. See that? Hmm. Whatever could this be? Okay, next, I want you to look at this circle and we're gonna come down at an angle about like this. Okay, imagine you're sort of mirroring this angle if you like. We're gonna come down like that. Then we're gonna do it again. Okay, I'm gonna give myself a little bit of space here like that and then a little C curve in between, okay? So down and a little C curve in between. All righty. And then on this side, look at the width of this between here and here. I'm gonna do the same thing, okay? Coming down this way, and it's gonna interrupt where that line is. Okay, check it out. Down and round it out, okay? And then here, up at the top, you're just gonna do a little line like that, a short one like so, okay? Okay, let's see if anybody's got this figured out. Um, no guesses yet, no guesses yet. Well, that's okay. Uh, now right across here, one quick line like so, and then another one just like that, okay? And under this curve, we're gonna do just one quick line like that. All right, now, this is gonna be interesting. From here, okay, in between these two lines roughly, somewhere in that vicinity, we are gonna draw a line that is gonna go almost straight down. Okay, you could draw it straight down if you like, or it could have a slight angle to it, but mostly close to vertical. It's gonna be the longest line that we draw in the whole drawing, okay? And you want to know how long to, uh, to make it. What you're going to do is you're basically going to take uh, this line here, okay? This straight line we drew at one point. Kind of going to double it. So we're going to come down, pause for a moment, do it again, okay? See that? So down, pause for a moment, do it again, all right? So about this long. Look at the length of that line. Figure that out for yourself. It's a long line. It's a long line. Now here, we're gonna come down at a different angle, like this, and then we're going to come up this way. Slight, slight, slight angle there. It's basically like you took this and made almost a right angle. All righty? Kind of feels like that, doesn't it? And just above it, you do another line, like so. All righty? RB is here. How you doing, RB? Thanks for joining us. Misty, you guessed it. I think my joke might have given it away. What do you think? Well done, Misty. Aha, uh -huh, we are drawing a boxer. Okay, now we're gonna take this little corner. We're gonna come down this way. Out we go. All right. Not quite as far down as this line. And then from here, we're gonna come down and across. Just connect those two, all right? Meanwhile, from this side, we're gonna bump that up against this line from that corner. Okay, so how's it looking there? Is this a tough one for all of you? It's got a lot of angles and things like that, but I know you're gonna do well with this one. Okay, from here, we're gonna come out that way. Okay, uh -huh. and then we're just gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna stop a little short and we're gonna come down and around, see that? got a little curve there at the end so I can connect these two. All right, now on this side, same deal, down 
down. I'm going to come out and connect. Okay. So far, so good. Now those boxing boots. We just go one and a two. And I like this part. This is where I make the lace. Watch this. I'm going to zoom in so you can see this really clearly. I'm going to do a little loop and a line. And again, loop and a line. See that? We went loop line. Okay. Now, check this out. Some details. One and a two. One, two. And then just a little line coming up there. Okay. And here for the face, this is really fun. We're just going to go right here. Make a little eye like that. See that? I went up and over. And then a little line like that. And there's a little ear poking out right there. Check it out. There you have a boxer. Maybe he's got a little drawstring here, right? So we just go like that. And here's a little highlight for this glove. That's what we did right there. And I think we got it. Check it out. That is the you draw portion of the show. Remember, you can always watch these back anytime you like. Um, so if you want to replay this and you want to follow along and pause it at any moment, you can always replay these and you can do the you draw it part of the show another time. Hope you like that one. It's a fun one. It's different from some of the other things you've done, especially because we drew a circle there. That's pretty different, pretty exciting. Um, all right, why don't we move on to our art vocab for the day? And it is a mono print, mono print. So there are lots of different kinds of printmaking, but a mono print can only be made once, and that's what makes them pretty special. And sometimes that's what makes them very valuable, especially if you have a mono print created by an artist such as uh, this artist here, Degas, French artist from uh, the late 1800s to uh, early 1900s, Degas. Um, part of the Impressionist uh, movement there in France. Um, and uh, one of my favorite artists. Anyway, with a mono print like this, what you would have done was you would have worked with a brush and probably some oil-based ink um, on some kind of a surface that will allow you to then transfer that one time to a piece of paper using a lot of pressure, okay, either through a printing press. But some people, what they'll actually do with a mono print is they'll, they'll put the ink down on either a piece of plexiglass or on a, a plate of some kind. Um, a flat surface that usually has um, the ink sit up on top of it. It's not going to get absorbed into the plate, right? Uh, and then they'll put a piece of paper on it that's a little damp, and they'll take a wooden spoon and just rub the spoon all over it to apply pressure and allow that ink to then uh, come up into the paper and make a print. And then what's happened is, of course, that ink has then gone away from, disappeared from the surface uh, on which it was painted. Um, and so then you have a monoprint. Some people will try and pull a second print out of it. That's usually called a ghost print. And that might have something kind of cool about it as well. Uh, but you can see the brushwork here. You can see a flat brush that Degas would have used to pull away from the dress here to create that tutu effect. And that would have been done by removing ink. So likely what would have happened here is he would have covered the whole plate with ink. And then with a brush that had no ink on it, brushed away and soaked up or moved away the ink. Uh, to reveal the lighter areas of the image here, which is such a cool process, kind of like working in reverse. Um, let's take a look at some other examples of some lovely monoprints here. Another one from Degas. I love this because it's very, uh, it's like ghost-like, ethereal, kind of mysterious. Um, and you can just see that there was a suggestion of an image here and it's, it's gone now. Uh, but that printing process too, with mono prints, sometimes depending on how steady you hold everything, you can sometimes get a little of a blurry effect. You can sometimes get things to shift ever so slightly and get kind of a neat effect like that. Um, and here's a really lovely one where you can see how that um, process of removing the ink, right? This is a subtractive process, would have created the textures that you see in the hair. Really lovely uh, to just pull through. You could do this with a brush, you could do it with a stick, you could do it with anything. You can wipe it with, with your fingers, right? It's really fun to make mono prints. 
Um, and finally, a modern example of this would be our good friend Gary Kelly from Iowa, wonderful artist and illustrator. And I love this one because you can see here, he probably was using some oil-based ink and then this would have been a little bit of turpentine maybe you drop on there. That will uh, create that watery puddle kind of a look. You can even see evidence of his thumbprint or fingerprint here where he's pushing into the ink that's there, um, wiping it away in different uh, with using different tools, maybe wiping it away with a cloth, that kind of thing. Um, really, really nifty. Lots of different textures you can get out of it and such a cool way to make art. Give it a try. Look up monoprint at home uh, on Google and you can find a couple of ways to do this at home with some pretty cheap and fun materials that you have lying around um, or you can get from Art Supply Store and make a couple of mono prints. It's a fun way to work. I recommend working on plexiglass. I think that's a great way to do it because you can wipe it clean, make as many prints as you like. Alrighty, that is our art vocab for today, mono printing. Um, we're going to move on to the old animal and activity game where you, oops, I'm sorry, I almost forgot. It's time for appreciation station, silly me. Today, who are we appreciating? It is the one and only Basmala. Basmala, we are appreciating you today. Thanks for watching the show. And uh, just want to call out that time when you and I were stuck in the belly of a whale again. I know, it's twice now, uh, one of our fishing trips. And I had no idea how to get out this time. And you were so clever. You started reciting very loudly some nursery rhymes and some bedtime stories. And wouldn't you know it, the whale eventually fell asleep. And so we were able to carefully tiptoe up the length of his tongue all the way to the mouth and we pushed our way squeezed through the baleen and swam to the surface and we were safe thank goodness so once again you came to the rescue with your thinking with your really brilliant ideas and i appreciate it so much thank you and now we're going to do the animal and activity <coughs> all righty pardon me I, I, I just my voice today i'm having a tough time i did a lot of talking so far this week. Holy cow. Now, in the chat, I need for you all to please suggest for me an animal doing something strange or funny or weird, and I will draw it. Now, just to give you an example of the kind of thing that we've done in the past, we had a Tyrannosaurus crocheting, right? Uh, we've had a, uh, this is supposed to be a swan throwing a ninja star, okay? Just as an example of the kind of silly stuff we do here. Um, so let's move our boxer back over here. And I'm going to grab a nice light blue color to sketch with. There it is. Maybe make it just a shade lighter. I'm so picky with that light blue, aren't I? Um, that looks good to me. And I am ready for your ideas. Let's see. We have a badger making frozen fruit drinks. That's pretty original. Hmm. What do badgers look like? I'm trying to imagine a Badger in my mind, it's tough. A bear tossing a pizza. I love that one, Brittany, that's fun. A bear tossing a pizza, cool. A hedgehog kayaking, RB, thank you for that one. A shoebill blowing an inflatable swimming pool. What is a shoebill? Is it some kind of a bird? A cow jumping rope, mercurial. I don't think we've ever drawn a cow on this show. Let's do it, that's fun. Gosh, I hope I can draw a cow. Maybe the reason I haven't done it before is because I don't know how to do it. Uh, let's see. Cow's heads are... What does a cow's head look like? I'm trying to picture a cow in my mind. All right, they got the big front of the face. Um, got a little ring in the nose there. And the ears. Don't they have little little horns like that? Some of them do, I guess. Cows, what do their horns look like? They're just kind of, or no, they're more sort of sticking out like this, right? One little one like that, one little one like that. Does that look like a cow to you all? I don't know. It's gonna be Kyle's closest version of a cow, whatever. Very cartoony, that's all I can say. All right, now let's give this cow a frilly dress. What do you think about that? Let's do that. And slide it down this way. So one arm 
out this way. And the rope's gonna be coming around that way. And there's the other hoof right there, holding that jump rope. And then we got our frilly bottom of the dress. <laughs> and some funny like cow shoes that have a cl uh, split in the, in the middle there, but they're still like sneakers. Just designing cow shoes here. That's part of the show, right? Shoe design for cows? Bovine shoe design? Haha, -ha, bovine shoe design. <gasps> I better hurry up and buy that domain name. What do you think? All right, there is our jump roping cow. What do you think about that? Weird. Can't believe, it. okay, I think that kind of looks cow. That's close enough to what a cow looks like, right? I guess, I don't know. Maybe we put some spots on there or something. Um, all right, let's see if we can knock this out in three minutes. What do you think, gang? We've done it before. Here we go, grab the darker blue. And a one, two, three, four. There's always something funny about those Gary Larson drawings of cows. Uh, you know, the far side, that comic. And um, I think that's probably <laughs> the thing that is right now what I'm imagining a cow looks like because that seems to be like what I'm doing with these shapes, right? Little horns like that. Actually, they're aren't they like a little bit more sort of stubby like that? I don't know. It's one of the fun things about the uh, the animal and activity game is the weird animals that I draw that are kind of okay and accurate, but not not quite. <laughs> Just part of the adventure. All right, let's get that arm there, and then this one. There's one hoof. And another hoof right there. And we're gonna have that jump rope come around like so. And then do like some cool Ruffly, riffly bits down here. And here are those bovine sneakers. First of their kind. And this one. This is so weird. There we go. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's always something different with the old animal and activity game here on the show. It's always a race against the clock. And that's what makes it exciting. Uh, there, I think that kind of passes for a cow. Uh, yeah, it works for me, gang. Works for me. I don't know. What do you all think? You, you gotta be honest. Does it look like a cow? It's cow-like. 
You know, the key is always to show a little kid, because if you show a kid something, they're going to be honest, and they're going to say, that's not a cow. Most adults don't want to hurt your feelings. They just, you know, they want to tell you everything's cool. All righty. Well, great suggestions from you all. I love it. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching the Draw Along show. As always, it goes very quickly. A little you draw it action for you there, a little boxer. We had some art vocab, a little mono uh, print action. Um, and uh, here, for the animal and activity, we had a cow jumping rope. Just the kind of thing you see every day, right? An average thing. Um, remember, tomorrow, same time for this show, 5.30 p.m. Eastern. Remember to tell the kids to watch this show. It's an all-ages drawing show. I'd love for more kids to watch this show and send me their drawings. I want to see what they do. Uh, in the meantime, take care of yourselves and take care of each other. Please remember to be kind, and I'll say ciao for now. <laughs>